Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. Today what I want to do is, uh, I've actually taken three separate videos, no, two separate videos, and, uh, and sort of put them together and shortened them up, and I'm just going to give you a short rundown of what's happening. Um, these are just some cups that I threw the other day. Um, they're going to be fluted. Right now I'm just doing the foot trimming to begin with, and I'll go back and flute them. That's the second half of the video. I think in one of my previous videos, I had mentioned that I prefer using a raw chuck uh, rather than, or a, a raw, I prefer using a raw chuck uh, as opposed to most other chucks. And often I'll throw cups off of the hump and then if anything's left over on the hump I'll just save it to trim on and that's what I'm doing today. So here I am just trimming um, these cups off of this raw chuck which as it turned out uh, this came to bite me back in the butt just a little bit because uh, I coned it up fairly narrow so it would accommodate these cups and it didn't dry very much overnight so um, it's that wobble you see with the cup there that's not the cup that's the chuck that's bent a bit from the pressure that I'm exerting so I'm having to take care to kind of keep things centered as I'm trimming um, anyway uh, so here I'm just going through these one by one and doing a pretty quick job of it. Um, I've also mentioned in previous videos to try and make your foot diameter the final diameter so you don't have to trim any of the uh, width of the foot off and this is something that uh, I don't know what I was thinking yesterday when I threw these cups but I completely just kinda had a brain fart on that one and uh, all of them ended up with slightly wide feet, so I'm having to trim the some of the diameter off these feet before I go down and trim uh, the foot per se. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going from the top at an angle just to, to make basically trim and mark what my diameter is going to be. Then I go and do one deep cut, and then I go back and and uh, clean up that uh, top edge again before going into the center and trimming out the center. I think there's one more here that I'm going to trim that I can I can say that again as it's happening but see how the foot's pretty wide there it needs to be smaller so I'm gonna first thing I'm gonna do is uh, put the tool apply the tool at an angle and that first cut is gonna basically go in and give me my initial diameter and then going in and cutting the depth of the foot cleaning up that inside line and then going and cleaning up the top line of the foot so this is way more trimming than I generally like to do but I kind of had to do it this time around so actually it's probably good to to show that every once in a while just you see there's various ways to trim it doesn't have to all be one way and if you adapt to the circumstances you can usually end up with something workable here is the beginning of the fluting section and I'm just using a simple over-the-counter loop tool for this And I'm not being too careful about having absolute straight lines and absolute same depth and everything. It's just basically, after you do a few of them, your hand gets used to it. And you just go around and uh, carve those lines in. But um, I do want to say that there are all kinds of tools you can use for fluting. This one just happens to work the best for me for these forms. Um, and this clay. The clay body for me seems to be the biggest factor in deciding which fluting tool to use. In this case it's a really sandy clay 
with a lot of little pebbles and things in it and really nice trimming tools um, for example uh, oh what's the name of those tools is it diamond core tools they make some pretty nice trimming tools which I have a few of but I rarely use them because if I use them on this type of body um, it really messes them up and even when it doesn't mess them up they cut so cleanly that I'm left without any texture in those grooves that I'm cutting in those flutes that I'm cutting so um, I really prefer more of a dull tool for this type of trimming and I save the diamond core the nice diamond core tools for when I'm working uh, in uh, porcelain or other fine bodies uh, where I, I don't really I'm not looking for the texture and I want really precise lines so again, this is just an over-the-counter loop tool, and you could make one of these real easy with just a piece of, uh, well, like one of the tines that you would pick up left over from a street sweeper or something like that. From this angle, it's hard to tell, but the way I hold the tool... My index finger is up supporting the tool and at the same time it brushes the surface of the clay as I go down so it's a sort of a depth gauge for me my index finger touching the surface there pretty soon well in a couple more minutes uh, I'll have a different angle for you to take a look at the same process um, some people may be thinking well don't you go through the cup sometimes and uh, the answer is yes uh, until you get used to it it can be easy to kind of go through the cup and end up with uh, a holy mess uh, but once you get used to it um, it's surprisingly easy to do the cutting and not end up with any holes although um, I did end up with uh, one or two holy cups out of this group as you'll see later in the video This type of trimming, um, I first got the idea for it by looking at the old, uh, old Imari cups, old porcelain cups, um, basically the same shape and the same design. Um, and at that period of time in the porcelain production, they did a lot of this fluting because their uh, technique was still sort of uh, the same technique. Uh, that they had used up to that point for working with clay and they weren't able to because of that short porcelain stone body they were not making thin objects and so uh, they used this fluting as a it wasn't a decoration element it was a way to take some weight off of those cups that were thrown thickly and it does a really good job and ends up looking quite decorative anyway so um, it's a nice sort of element to incorporate if you're looking for a way to uh, throw thick and then trim down and lose some weight without losing strength in the form this is a good way to do it those thicker portions just act sort of like ribs and they hold everything up real nicely and the the places where the flutes are actually very very thin uh, in fact, well, this is stoneware, so it might not be so apparent, but when I do it with porcelain, um, those areas uh, are so thin that uh, you can shine a light right through it. And sometimes it's so thin that there might even be a small hole that just gets filled with glaze, and the glaze is the only thing holding the... Uh, whatever's in the cup in the cup so here you can see the index finger supporting that cutting edge and it's also sort of brushing it's it's up there a bit and it's, it's sort of brushing down the surface of the cup and that helps me maintain a consistent depth when I'm trimming
this pedestal I'm using for trimming. Um, oh, there, there's, uh, I remember I mentioned this clay had some rocks in it. That was a big one that tore right out. And uh, I'm not retrimming that because retrimming it would probably just make it look worse. And the way it is now, it might look interesting once it's fired. We'll have to look at it after it's fired and find out. But um, anyway, that's a hole, and I'll show you what I do with these holes um, in a minute. There you can see actually two holes. There's light coming through in that where that rock just got pulled out and there's light showing through one other place. And all that is is a piece of the trimmed, one of those trimmed crumbs that fell down. I just picked up that, squished it between my fingers, gave it a lick, and I'm sticking it on the inside of the pot there. No reason to toss the whole pot out just because of a little hole in the trimming. Once that is smoothed over nicely and glazed and fired, uh, no one will ever know the difference. I think there was one more. Yeah, it looks like there was one more. There it is, yeah. Another little blob. And you don't have to worry about the clay that you're fixing it with ending up being too thin, because like I said, you know, where those flutes are trimmed, it's already extremely thin. So if anything, this is actually adding a little bit of thickness over what would have been there at a normal flute but yeah that pretty much does it I'll go over those once they've firmed up a bit I'll go in and I might go in and, and scrape them down a little bit if they're uh, bulging on the inside but usually they're not too bad and usually it, it's really unnoticeable uh, a lot of these cups this is about the limit of how firm I want it to be I'll even trim when it's a little bit less firm and if that's the case I'll be trimming on a folded over paper towel or bed sheet so that the lip of the cup is not getting uh, smashed into that hard surface. Um, in this case the rims were pretty firm so I'm just going on the wood there. It doesn't seem it didn't cause a problem for me today. And the other thing, when it is softer, uh, well, right here I'm keeping the entire rim of the cup on the surface of that wood. Um, it does make it easier sometimes if you pull the front lip of the cup off the edge of the wood there. Um, that gives you a little bit more, more knuckle room without your knuckles knocking on the edge of the, the pedestal there. But um, if you do that, you have to make sure that the rim is strong enough to support it. If you're trimming when it's really soft, you'll deform the rim when you press down uh, as you're cutting the flute and that you don't always notice when it's happening and, and then you go back later after you've trimmed a bunch of them and realize you ruined a bunch of cups so and that's it thank you for watching